Hey, good morning, everybody. It's June 22nd, 2022. Uh, about five days ago, I installed a cold, new cold air intake, which is what you're getting ready to watch the install of. Just want to make a couple pointers. Uh, the can in filter you see me take out is really dirty. Be advised, I did not clean it while we were in court site. The last time it was clean was October of 2021. Um, I had only checked it while we were in court site and decided it was clean enough to get me home. Of course, now that I'm home, I went ahead and replaced it completely with this new air intake. Uh, another uh, part is uh, towards the end when I'm putting the intake tube on, my battery went dead. I didn't realize that. My apologies. But you get a general consensus how it goes in. Uh, finally, during the video recording, you'll see a lot of scenes where my head's cut off. I didn't want you to concentrate on me. I want you to concentrate on my install. So hopefully that will clarify that. All right, uh, without any further ado, I hope you enjoy the video. Um, we're very happy with it so far. Uh, of course, further testing will uh, uh, prove that going down the road. Never know, you may want to run over to Gail Banks and check out his cold air intakes. His are proven to, uh, to work a lot better than uh, some of these uh, aftermarket ones. Although I was happy with K&N, uh, I had to use the original air box. This upgrade included replacing the air box. 58% more airflow is what they guarantee it to be. Okay, uh, by the way, I'm not getting paid for this video or uh, anything from uh, banks. This is my personal notes, and uh, I just wanted to share them with you. Okay, on to the video. Enjoy. All right, good morning. It's June 17th, 2022. I'm getting ready to do an upgrade on the Duramax. One thing that I always like to upgrade on, on my engines is my intake. I've already got put a K&N filter in here, which I thought was great, until I saw Gail Banks do a complete intake, cold air intake upgrade for the L5P Duramax, which is what this engine is. So I waited patiently for over six months before, be, before they became available for purchase. And I was one of the first people to order it back in April, on April 20th. So today I have the package and I'm gonna get ready to put it together. Uh, first thing I have to do is remove the old. I've started ahead already. I've collected the tools that were recommended. You have uh, a couple of options on instructions. Bring out your computer with step-by-step -step video. Or you get a barcode included with the instructions and you can scan it. And it will come out on your uh, iPhone, which is a lot easier to use. Now these are the written instructions I've already watched the installation video that they also offer, so this would be a kind of reminder of step-by-step -step procedure. Right now, I've already took the first step, and I've uh, disconnected both batteries, the negative terminals. Before I disconnect the uh, mass airflow sensor, you have to wait 15 minutes to allow for the computer to discharge itself. So I started a timer. I don't know if you can see it from over there, but I have just under seven minutes to go. So while I'm waiting for that, uh, I'll go ahead and get uh, the rest of my uh, tools set up and uh, get ready to show you this installation. Um, one of the biggest things that you're gonna notice is the size of the intake filter. It's 58% larger than what you get by stock. Now, anything you know about diesels and turbocharged engines, the more air you can get in, the quicker the response, the better the fuel mileage. So, that was one of the major reasons. With fuel prices the way they are, it, it's time to uh, do whatever you can to uh, uh, get better performance out of your engine. Although, this engine here, I have no complaints. So, give me six more minutes, and uh, we'll start with the next step. Okay, we have about 14 more seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 
Okay, timer has expired. I can now proceed with the removal of the wiring to the mass airflow sensor. Now one of the reasons you had to wait that 15 minute timer, I'm going to be adding a module on this line between this wire and the mass airflow sensor with the install of the new air box. If I didn't let that 15 minute timer elapse, when I booted back up to start, uh, I could have had a uh, error code. So that was a way to get rid of the error code. So to remove the mass airflow sensor, you just pull back on that red tab. There's a, it uh, has a little black tab in front of that. Squeeze it down and it allows it to release from the top of this little tang right here. So that is now disconnected. <clears throat> Next step. We can now remove the resonator bolt. I'll be right back with my tool and show you the resonator. Okay. This is the resonator. It's no longer going to be used. It's a number 13 socket. And it's buried very deep down in the bottom there. So, let me get my uh, tools out, my little blankie, so I can get up on top of this, Ugh. and there it is. Like I said, this will not be reused. Okay. I'll put that nut back on top when we're done taking everything out. Okay. Put it in my tool bag here with my tools. Next step. To do I have to remove two hose clamps the one right on the turbo and the one right on the air box probably been easier with the little socket but they recommended a flat tip screwdriver for this part So that's this one. Loosen that up, make sure it's all loose. And then this one all the way over here. All right. And now, remove that section. Wonder how much of a struggle this will be. That isn't a problem because that was a bolt. This will probably be a little bit of a problem because it's rubber on something that gets hot. This seems to be pretty easy. So, We're now down to that piece there, which, as I stated, will probably be a little bit more harder to take off. Rubber and heat have a way to fuse to each other. Okay, let's give that a little twist. Isn't this special? Have to get up here a little more. Oh, this 
right here. There we go. Now it should come up. There's a black nozzle and the black hose. I couldn't tell exactly where they separated. But once I was able to determine where the separation point was, it was a lot easier. So there you go. That eliminates this. As I stated before, nothing is going back on here but I intended to put the nut back on. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> there we go. Never know, there may be some kind of a aftermarket adapter for that. Happy to report the turbo looks really clean and really good. You can barely see it, but it's way down this tunnel over here. But beyond that. Okay, next step. I believe we need the number 10 socket again. I'm glad I don't have any tools in this bag. I'll be spending a lot of time looking for them. Okay. Go back to the uh, back to the phone just to confirm. Now that that's out of there. Next. Oh, remove the nut off of the air box. Oh, it doesn't look like I'm taking the air. Yeah, I'm not taking the air box apart. But I will be because I want to show you the difference in size of filters. from what I'm taking out which size is not much different from stock so this whole assembly here is only held on with one nut here this nut we will be reusing when we mount the new intake so you don't want to lose it There we go. I'll stick that one in my pocket. <laughs> At this point, we're ready to remove this whole box. There's going to be two little fingers that hold it to the to the frame on this side, and there's only the bolt on this side. So, using some force, you just pick up on the whole thing, and you remove it. Okay? There you go. The box is out. Wow, there's a lot of room in there now. <laughs> okay. So, that's all it took to remove it, guys. What did that take? Five minutes? Two hose clamps and two number 13 nuts. That's all it took to take that loose. Now what I'm going to do is... Uh, by the way, if you don't have this wire on your on your truck, it's because this is my coax for my uh, CB antenna. So I may have to reroute this just a little bit. I don't know yet. I'll find out when I put the new one in. Okay. What I'm going to do is reposition the camera now and compare so you can compare the air boxes. So you can make your own decision if you think it would be worthwhile. In the meantime. I'll throw this carpet over the top of it so a bird doesn't uh, decide to try to think that that's a nice place to make a bird's nest. Although I'm not going to be gone that long. All right. Pause here. Okay, okay guys, this is a do-over. Apparently my camera quit working. Uh, 
real quick, the air intake box. It's the same on the bottom, on the front. It's the same on the top. Here, although this one's a lot smaller, as you can see in comparison, but what's nice is this one has an extra hole here. Why do you need that extra hole? Look how big that air intake is compared to stock. Even though this is a K&N filter, which you can tell needs cleaning, I, I'll clean it and I'll, uh, I'm not sure what I'll do with it, but uh, maybe somebody out there with a Duramax might want one, who knows. Uh, anyway, um, something I'll think about. But uh, as you can see, square inch, Look at, the, look, look at, the, look at the, how much air comes through there, okay? So, 58% more air. That's one of the improvements. The intake pipe, the intake pipe, let's see if I can get this back over here, since this is a do-over. This is the original intake pipe. Mass airflow sensor will be transferred to this side. This is the original intake for the original filter and the original intake tube with resonator. The resonator is supposed to take some of that whirl or spin that you hear on your turbo. Um, you know, I don't care. You got a diesel and you want to hear your turbo, I think this would be a great upgrade. I'll let you know how bad or how good it is. Okay? So, this is what came off. And this is what will be going on in the exact same place. As you can see, the size of the intake hole is a lot larger. Okay? Couldn't do that with that one. All right. We're going to uh, start the install now. Hopefully it recorded. Okay, as earlier, earlier stated, the mass airflow sensor has to be transferred. You have to use a Torx head T25 to remove the old one and you know what somebody messed up on that it's smaller than a T25 I gotta go back to the tool shed all right guys I went back to the instructions and it did say that these were T25s. In actuality, they're T20s. So I don't know if that was a typo or if my particular 2022 uh, truck has the uh, different sizes. By the way, you will not be reusing these screws. And there's a warning in there to make sure that you don't. The thread series is different than what's in the uh, Banks uh, Ram Air hood. Okay, so once you get those screws out, tuck them away in a pocket or something. Pull it out of here. Be careful. Remember, this is a sensitive uh, piece of equipment. And you slide it right back in the hole the same way that you took it out. And then they give you two different, two Phillips head screws to put the new one on. Okay, so make sure you use them. Get them both started here. If you notice, I'm only putting them in snug. I said don't over tighten it. Alright, it's in there. We're now done with the old hood completely. Just toss it out of the way. Toss the other one out of the way. Okay, that step is done. Let me see what the next step is. Okay, the next step has to do with the seal for the, for the uh, air scoop. If you look, there's kind of a claw side or a little opening there where that goes on the inside 
like looks like when they cut this one off they didn't cut that side off. yeah they didn't cut that side off smooth so we'll put this side on first okay all right you're supposed to work that all the way around the box let me see what I'm doing here Huh. It's not grabbing as I expected it to. piece of aluminum that didn't get cut off all the way. Throw it over there for now. Anyway, let's try this again. Maybe I'm not pushing it on far enough for it to grab. There's nothing for it to grab onto on the inside. So I'm not quite sure. I think I just found the most difficult part of this install. Because it's spreading open, but it won't stay on the groove. Hmm. I'm sure once I get it started, most of the way around. Let's do this. Let's uh, let's start here in the middle, and then work it down both sides. See what happens with that. Oh, by the way, I was going to wear my Gail Banks uh, uh, T-shirt that I got. I got some uh, apparel, but it's Father's Day tomorrow or Sunday, and my uh, grandkids put a T-shirt put together. So if you're wondering what I'm wearing, that's what I'm wearing. Okay, wait a minute, maybe we're, maybe we're getting some headway now. Oh, there we go. Got to push it on really, really hard. To get it to seat up in there. Okay, well, when I finish this, I think I'll save some battery life on the camera. We'll see what I could do to finish this. I'll show you what the finished product is when it's done. Okay, so it is a little difficult to put this on, but if you squeeze really hard, this I had to cut this off because they want that seemed to be over here in the middle and I didn't start in the middle and so I haven't made my final cut yet but I mean you gotta really squeeze that on make sure it's all the way in the corners okay and you will have some left it's not exact they want you to leave about an eighth to a quarter inch left and then push it around that it fits between the seals. So I'm looking at about a quarter right there. Okay, here comes a little piece of metal. And I'm gonna have to work it around until I get 
I think I've worked it around pretty good already. I probably could have cut it flush and probably made the made the gap. There we go. It just snapped right in there. There we go. Oh, I think we got her. I had to pull the other side out, bring them together, and pull them back together to make that seal. But that's what that looks like when you get it on there. Again, this will be where the hood meets the seal for the ram air that comes in. Well, I can't wait to take this thing down the road. All right. Let me go find out what the next step is. Okay. The next step was to remove the grommet from the old filter housing. It sat in there like that. You push the metal out, which makes the rubber more pliable so you could pull it out of the hole. In this case, the rubber grommet will go on the inside or the outside, whichever way you want to do it. Here, I'll do it from the outside. Stick it through in there until it uh, fills in the gap there. All right, does that look good there? sure that it's in there then you want to stick that piece of metal back in the center like so okay it didn't say anything about this side and there was there were uh, there are grommets here I wonder if I was supposed to take these grommets off Yeah, I bet you you got to take these grommets off too, and I don't think they mention it. Okay. Boy, that's a dirty air filter. I put about 3,000 miles on that filter, guys, driving back from Arizona. That's when I cleaned that one last. Okay. Next step. Hi, I got breakfast time. Okay. It's now uh, noon, and Oma <laughs> finally got out of bed. She, she has her coffee and what? Her well, breakfast. And her crackers. crackers. Now, actually, she's been out uh, flea marketing with our son. All right, guys, here's what I got. That rubber grommet that I just put in, or I took off the bottom of the old box, I don't think anybody expected it to come out with the filter. So if you look, you can see the hole that they go in, and they're going to be perfect for where those uh, bottom pieces go in. Okay? So, the filter box is ready to go in. You're gonna line, it's gonna line up with the uh, uh, intake that comes out through the front. I'm not sure if it goes in or out. Oh, it looks like that, fill, that part goes into the pipe. You have this one that goes over the bolt. It's already over the bolt. So basically, I just need to find the holes. Oh, I'm trying to see how them holes are going to line up. If I get this one on the outside lined up, it should... The other one should line up, right? We all agree with that statement. That's way too high. That's where the problem is, guys. That one in the front, you gotta line it up and then push it into the into the box. back over here the pin is there boy it's so close that pin is right there but this other pin and I can't really t grab it
probably not staying down because I don't have the bolt in it. But that one lines up. And that one lines up. Guys, I think it's just time to put the bolt in. That was that number 13 that I took out before. Stuck in my pocket. Yeah, looks like I gotta go back and get a deep well, guys. Yep, I gotta go get a deep well. Okay, so I got sidetracked. <laughs> that reason it wasn't working is because it was a number 10, not a 13. And now that I know the right size, expect it to go anywhere especially when I get that tube lid on okay let's see what's next getting down to let's see how many let me tell you how many steps there is and which one I'm on Well, if you include the setting of the life of the air filter inside, there's 26. But I am at... Fifteen. Fifteen and sixteen. Pretty easy. Put the filter in with the gasket. Filters in, gasket. That was two steps right there. Okay, 17. Oh boy, the intake tube. We're getting close now, guys. There's a couple steps here. Make sure you follow them. Then make sure that you put the two. All right, guys, my apologies. My battery went dead right after the installation of the box. So, no, the bottom box. Oh, the, bottom box. Okay. the bottom box. It's only one bolt to hold it in and two feet that go in the, uh, the grommets that come off the old filter. Okay, it was still a little bit loose um, physically, but as soon as I put this hood on and connected it to the intake tube, everything stiffened up. As you can see, it's nice and tight, but still flexible when the engine moves. Okay, one of the things they tell you about is to make sure that this goes up against this in this area right here. Okay, that is the that positions the right angle into the intake tube of the turbo. Now the turbo has this black flange on it. You put the rubber hose all the way up against that flange before you tighten that clamp. So it's only two clamps now to hold this in. As you watched me do before, I transferred the uh, mass airflow sensor and then I put the Gale Banks control module on it. And that was the point when I went to check the battery and noticed it was dead. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to wire tie that per their recommendation. Okay, Oma's going to take over the... She didn't bring me the right wire cutters, but I'll... Oh, I did. Solar, same color handle. Sorry, I grabbed the wrong ones. Yeah. Okay, so, I apologize. Okay. Let me bring the ladder back over. 
and this is the last step of the installation of the air intake okay and basically what I'm going to do is put this wire tie in my mouth and I'm going to wire tie it here to, to the wiring harness okay like this and then I will do the same thing to the wire on the other side and then it won't accidentally fall against anything that gets hot Well, they have cutters on them, but they have their needle nose cutters. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I wanted just regular wire cutters. Okay, as you can see, that is now out of the way, and I'm ready for hooking up the batteries. That's the next step. I'll hook this one up first. You can go on the other side of me because the battery's right there where the camera was. Okay. Oh, there's a nice thing when the sun goes in. All right, that's on there, and I just need to tighten it. That's it. That's one. And now I'll go do the other one. It's over here, Oma. Going back to the instructions. Which are on my phone. This is one I'm going to go inside. I don't even think I have the keys with me. Oh, I'll get the keys for you. Don't worry. All right, let me see. Okay, reconnect the negative terminals. That's 25. 26, reset the air life filter. I'm going to have to enable it first because it was disabled by the... Um, dealer after they cleared the error code what you get if you don't do what they tell you to do you get life uh air filter life monitor uh failure or an error code and it does not clear no matter what you do until you take it to the dealer right they have to put it on the computer to clear it and at that time i confessed i put a can in filter let me clear this by the way guys that uh the air intake comes in through the grill and goes down through this tube right here. So that's the one that goes in through the side, the one that comes through the hood, and now I'm going to have one that comes in through the side fender. As you can see, all this room here. Um, you can actually see the hole, I think. Let me see. Oh, it's a little sunny there. It's right behind the horns. Uh, can the I? air intake. I don't know if you can see it or not. I don't I can't because I'm not up there. But. Right behind the horns there, you'll see there's a big hole in the fender. That's where the intake is going to go in for the uh, for the new filter housing. So, oh, push the red button, hon. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. I changed out of my my uh, um, Father's Day gift to show you one of my T-shirts, one of my face apparel. Okay. Hi, Vanna. Plus. Vanna, go a little slower. Plus my hat. Okay, Vanna, go a little slower with All your right, back. You open, you open with recording my back. Okay, so it says I have to reset the life monitor. Well, I can only reset the life monitor if the truck is running. 
So if we don't hear chunk chunk, that means I didn't leave nothing in the pipe. The sun is bad. Okay. So now I have to go to my. Wait a minute. You, I'm, I'm oh, right. I have to dismiss this. I'm right. I'm right on <laughs> okay, it. Okay. So. Yeah, I see that. Okay. So I have to go to settings. Uh, info page options go find the air li air filter life turn it on then I can go back to info and I'll scroll through and see if the air filter comes back on there it is oh it says it's still disabled so uh, oh wait a minute I can enable it here no I got that same error code uh, check engine air filter system so it doesn't recognize it I probably should have just left it off because now I won't be able to clear that until I go back to a dealer again because I had the, f the problem once I guess I'm going to always have the problem darn it I don't think I can disable it now what oh music yeah. Uh, now I'll go back. I'll probably, I'll probably always have that error code again now. Until you take it to a shop. Until I take it to a shop. So, fuel filter. No, air filter's not coming on. So, nope. Alright, well, we'll find out. Here, we'll, we can find out right now. I'll turn it off. And if I restart it and it says to uh, fix it, then I have to fix it. Hood open, dismiss. Driver one, dismiss. Check engine air filter, dismiss. So I'm gonna always have that dismiss button now uh, until I have it cleared by the dealer again. But it's okay. I guess, yeah, oh yeah. It won't affect anything. It's not gonna affect the engine or anything like that. No, no. Nothing to stress over. I, in fact, maybe next time I'll ask them to enable it again, is yeah. what I'll do. Okay. So, okay, well, let's uh, get the hood closed, and I uh, just want to take it down to the bottom of the hill and uh, bring it back up. You're going to go for the, that part of the ride? Yeah. By the way, here, come here. Watch as I close the hood of these two matching. They, I tried it already. They match perfectly over the top of that. Oh. I don't want to do that one. Oh, they're on the side to watch it. Hey, wait, wait, wait. The sun's in my eyes. It's hard, it's hard to okay, see. Okay, I'm right on it. I'm right on it. the camera in there. Oh, yeah, it's going to fit. See how close it is? Okay, that's it. Let's go take it for a ride.